Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, we bless you. We are live in Celebration City. It's so amazing to be able to um, talk to you and let the Holy Spirit rise up inside you and bring you words, truth, joy, everything that belongs to Christ. It's so good. We love you very much. We, we thank you that you really are interested. You are pursuing the truth of God. You know, it's, I've been reading for lots of years, and I've been seeing that humans are actually seeking this true God. They are trying to figure out God. And uh, somebody said that probably this is the, the greatest question that's important to ask is who is God for you? What is your definition? <laughs> what is your relationship with God? And that probably changes lots of things about how you live your life and how you know, define past, present, future. Right? Your, all your identity is related to how do you answer that question. And we know that religions, they try to answer that question. And uh, one, one reason that I love um, Christianity is that the answer is, you want to know how God is or who God is? Here he is. So Christ showed up. Jesus showed up to really introduce us to this amazing, unknown, all-powerful God. Now, people had all kind of revelations of God, all kind of descriptions. You know, lots of religions where you see those pictures or those idols, lots of stuff comes from imaginations, from visions, from dreams. You will you won't believe that people can dream so ugly things sometimes, but yeah, you know, they do. Fear brings all kind of imaginations in people's lives. And then they build that idol, idol and they start worshiping it because they are afraid of it. Fear births lots of this type of religion. So I love the fact that Jesus came actually to say, here's how God is. And we are followers of Jesus. And at the same time, we are in the same life quality that was in him is in us. So we are the representatives of the Father on this earth. We are sons. When Jesus resurrected, he said, go and tell... Uh, my brothers, my brethren. Before, uh, they were the friends, they were my disciples, and, you know, the servants. But after resurrection, they were the brethren. Come and talk to my family. This is who you are. This is who you are. The brethren. The family of Jesus. So, it's, it's interesting that we speak like ones that have answers. You know, it's, it's pretty polite in uh, uh, pre, you know, um, uh, you know, very, very up to date in debates to say, well, we don't know. Nobody knows. Uh, who do you think you are to know? That's kind of how people like to be humble, right? I just want to say that we speak like ones that know. And if anybody has a problem with that, just talk to God. Okay, just take your cause with him and ask for a court appearance. <laughs> and just, just let him deal with that. But we speak like ones that were made, were brought this revelation. That like ones that know. So what we're speaking, yes. Loving the Father, depending on the Father. He is the source of our existence. But what we are saying, we say because He let us know. He put His truth inside us. 
And we cannot not talk like that. Somebody told us we had uh, an amazing wedding um, last night with some people from us. You might know them, Claude and Sephora. And somebody was saying, hey, we are not toning down. We are not really compromising. When you, even for the wedding, when we talk, we talk like 100% sonship. And I'm thinking we don't know how to compromise. I don't know. You, you guys still know how to tone down and talk religion? I, I forgot. I don't know how to talk like that. You know, I talk like he taught me. We, we tell people the truth. You know, they might say we're crazy. They might say, well, who do you think you are? They might just run away. But there will be a number of them. They're going to say, wow, I always wanted to hear that. I always wanted to hear someone speaking that way because that's in my heart too. So that's okay. You know, praise the Lord. The people that the Lord, the Holy Spirit places that in their hearts, they'll come around. They'll love to hear more of it. And I'm sure that's why you are listening. We are um, in the Celebration City. We are celebrating. We're going to go into some worship. And... Um, we'll have a, a great time to just enjoy different people, parts of the same body with you. That they're going to come and share what the Lord is doing inside them. You know how I know if somebody shares that's a living word? Because it brings increase in my heart. It gives me revelations. It explains things, answers to me. It clarifies things. It brings joy, the fruit of God inside my soul. I know that person speaks a living word, right? Otherwise, it's just like, mm, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, I'm going home. Now, dead words. Informational, but dead. They don't produce any life inside. So I know we're going to have lots of live words that are going to bless all of you. We bless you. Let's go ahead and worship him now. Amen. Refreshing, it's time for great joy. It's time that the word of the Lord comes alive. It's time for refreshing, it's time for great joy. It's time that the word of the Lord comes alive. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. It's time for refreshing, it's time for great joy. It's time that the word of the Lord comes alive. It's time for His blessing to come in your life. It's time for renewing, renewing your mind. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. It's time for refreshing. It's, it's time, time for great joy. Oh, thank you, Father. It's time that the word revive, of the Lord refresh, restore. 
praise you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We trust you, Father. Great joy. Great joy. Great joy. Great joy. Is great joy. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord. He set us free. In His presence, all the chains fall off of us. In His presence, love come on the throne. In His presence, forgiveness come. In his presence, life. you and him right now the father himself loves you I just, want to pray just look straight in his eyes just tell him you love him he pours his love upon you right now like rivers like a shower of light all over your soul the source of my existence you are the beginning and the end you are my first love there is no one like you no one
He brings this peace and rest upon your soul, quiets the questioning mind. He knows you. He loves you. He uniquely, extravagantly, forever loves you. I will always love you, says the Lord. Always. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for the blood, Jesus. That cleanses me. Without that blood, we could not even it's think your about blood you. That gives me love. The blood made us righteous. It's your blood Gave us a new birth. Took my a new identity. Glory to the blood of Jesus. Praise you, Lord, for the blood. Wash it me. White is then the snow, in the snow, my Jesus, my Jesus, God's precious sacrifice. It's your love that sets. One drop of that blood is more powerful than the whole hell, than any demons, any sicknesses, any problems of the world. One drop of that blood, the blood of God, destroys the darkness, destroys the power of demons and sin and flesh. Glorious power of the blood of Jesus. We love my Jesus, God's living sacrifice. Is your love that set me free? Is your love? We love you, Jesus. That took my we worship the Lamb of God. In receiving sacrifice, Praise it washes me. It washes me. It washes me. Yes, thank you. In redeeming sacrifice, Praise you, Lord. it washes me. New life, new creation, new hopes, new relationship, new place of being one of Him. His life is in you. Praise you, Father. Praise you for the blood, Jesus. We have this boldness to enter the Holy of Holiest by the new and living way, by the freshly slain Lamb of God, by the living blood of Jesus. We enter the Holy of Holiest, the place where He is, and our spirit is 
born of him we enter into that place the place of one the place of majesty of greatness of all power a place of eternal life we enter by the blood of Jesus thank you father praise you Jesus the blood of Jesus it is your blood Fills us with life. I want to, as you sing, Father, I adore you. And Jesus, I adore you. Spirit, I adore you. I want you to let the Holy Spirit show you how different. How amazing is the relationship with the Father, with the Son, and with the Holy Spirit. Like in a completely way to show you this tri-dimensional relationship and understand that they are one God. Tri-dimensional into one. Just as you sing this, let the Holy Spirit reveal to you relationship of life Father love of the Father for you. Jesus. Oh, God. 
behind you are. Fill us today. Fill us, Holy Spirit. Because when you fill us, you fill us with the love of the Father. You fill us with the life of Christ. Fill us today. We love you, Holy Spirit. Holy God, we worship you. Father, Son, Holy Wow. It's pretty amazing. So this is, um, this is some of the worship times that completely rack me. It's like I don't want to do anything else. I'm done. <laughs> um, <clears throat> nothing else matters. It's Him. It's the Lord. He matters. I will um, well, just opening up, we, um, we've been talking for a couple of weeks, and that's then the morning service. If you want to check that out, we've been talking about increase. And for the ones that missed it, we, we talked about the three areas of increase. One is this uh, increase by addition, the growth by addition. And we show that the Lord would add to something that's established with that people, would add everything that you are missing or you are needing. When you know the first thing first, seek first the kingdom of God. And he will add all the other things to this established first thing. Okay? And then uh, we talked about the growth from inside. And this is probably one of the most personal things because when the seed is sown, it somehow comes apart. It's almost like gives its life. So the plant can start growing from it. 
this is pretty amazing that that seed knows that is there to die for the life of the plant and lots of things that the Lord is doing in in you they start to this place of death that lots of lots of things are finished are done with you and you are saying wow I was expecting just to grow just to grow by addition but this growth always starts with the death of a seed just believe in God believe in God that he tells you in spite of all circumstances in spite of all everything else people say just believe in God that's like something inside you die everything that the feelings tell you that the you know normal uh, wisdom you know the common sense tell you sometimes that dies too and something grows and we'll be talking today more about the multiplication of seeds the vision that the Lord has for us is multiplication he does not even look at the growth of a seed in you and building character as a purpose in itself what he sees is as that grows inside you it's gonna produce something so amazing that you are able to sow into others his purpose his vision is to multiply everything that he does in you is not just for you that's just the beginning that's just the beginning everything he works inside you the healing that he brings you the the family victories that he gives you the forgiveness power that he works in you to forgive the ones that wrong you all the work he does in you develops into a fruit that has seeds in it so you can bless others he brings these people to your life in your life on your path so you can start sowing from the fruit of your growth so that's how the Lord looks at all the development all the growth everything that happens with you on this earth is not just to train you for heaven uh, in heaven it's not just to form you to be such a nice humble Christian it's to produce a fruit that glorify the Father it glorifies the Father because that fruit by sowing of the seed is gonna bring more fruit more fruit multiplies the seed so um, I will I will open it up um, for different different one of you here and of course if you have some things that the Lord shows you just send us an email or a text message or comment on the blog and things that the Lord shows you about this and we can uh, definitely publish it so um, who's gonna start Sam, you want to kick it off? Good afternoon. I want to start out in uh, Genesis twenty-two seventeen. Indeed, I will greatly bless you, and I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. So this promise was, uh, we all know the story, it's to Abraham, and uh, I just like to look at this promise because all of us can relate to it in modern times that this is Israel, and everything, the absolute fulfillment of this promise in our lives, we all know someone of the Jewish culture. Um, 
they've overcome the Nazis, the Holy Roman Empire, the Dark Ages. You look at their history, the amount of resistance that has come against them, and that this promise has withstood all of that. And this promise was given to a guy whose wife was barren, like we mentioned last week. And God created something here that literally was impossible and performed it. And today it still stands. And that is an absolute real life example of God performing increase by extreme multiplication. I like to go over and uh, several times in here it mentions the word seed. And I would like to uh, focus on that a little bit. In Genesis chapter 1, it talks about um, God is creating the earth and he says that every seed shall reproduce after its own kind. Now, right there, he has a law about seeds, how they will work, how they grow, and what they will reproduce. So, um, skipping up to the Gospel of John. Um, hold on, let me get it out real quick. Uh, it's chapter 12, verse 24. It said, Most assuredly, I am saying to you, unless the grain of wheat, having fallen into the earth, die, it itself remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. So if we look at the seed, when the seed dies, like Val was saying, it gives its life and produces a plant and produces more seed. The devil had this plan to kill God and therefore kill salvation, kill Jesus, and defeat God. What he did... And it says in Corinthians somewhere that if he had known the plan, he never would have killed the Lord of glory. What he did was he killed the seed of eternal life. And you look at what happened. All he did was create an endless amount of Jesuses. Jesus is the seed of eternal life. You have that seed in you. You have a perfect, incorruptible seed in you. It says in 1 Peter 1, 4, that your inheritance is a perfect, incorruptible seed that does not fade away. That is the resurrection life of Jesus in you right now. And that seed multiplies. That seed is in the whole body of Christ. That seed is in every person that is washed in the blood of Jesus. You look at how many people God brought in through his death, through giving his life, he resurrected his entire body into himself. And he will multiply through every individual member of the body of Christ. The word that you speak into the body has the same multiplying power of what Jesus' seed had when he went to the cross and rose again. Your word is life. Your word multiplies internal life into whoever hears it. Your faith is not dead. Your faith is living. Your word is living creative power. Your word changes people. I can tell you one thing about increase that I've gone through is uh, when I was 22 years old, I was addicted to cocaine and I went into rehab and I had tons of seed of God in me and I went to this faith-based rehab place and uh, you had to be in there for a year and uh, basically uh, sow a bunch of your time into this mission to learn how to not be a drug addict. And uh, we spent about eight to ten hours a day reading the Bible, (laughs) 
And if you got in trouble, you had to write down the Bible. <laughs> so you were just in the Word, in the Word, in the Word on a constant basis. And I can tell you, there were things planted in me during that time that developed this confidence in me that I began to realize in my relationship with Jesus. God placed this just confidence, this inner thing in me to where I know that I know that I know he set me free. And I've been out of that for eight years, and I have never once been even remotely tempted to go back to that. I know a lot of people that really struggle with that, that struggle with it the rest of their lives. And constantly return back to something they hate that rips them off. The word of God destroys the works of the devil. The word of God can instantly set you free from something that is impossible to be free from. It is impossible in the world by human power to stop doing heroin, to stop doing cocaine, to stop being under the bondage of the devil, to stop being under the bondage of sin, if you are in him, in him being in the devil, not God, <laughs> thought I'd clarify that real quick, you are a slave to him. You are not free. The only thing that can set you free is the blood of Jesus in his word. Knowing him and accepting him. Without him, you are a slave to the devil. A simple word can set someone free from that. Just imparting that faith that that can happen to them can completely change their life and can multiply to tons more people. I know it, I've seen it, I've lived it in my life. Seeing one person gain the faith of freedom in Jesus and seeing it affect tons more lives. Seeing it save families, uh, save fathers, save mothers, save sons, sisters. It changes people. And it's the resurrection life of Jesus. This isn't Christianity. This isn't Catholicism. This isn't good thoughts. This is the Holy Spirit in power changing people, increasing people from the inside out. This is a seed. It, it is alive in your heart. It is real, and it is powerful. It multiplies, it grows, and it will change your soul into the image of Jesus. It is the absolute truth. It is the absolute will of God that you increase. Every promise in the Bible is to benefit you, to prosper you, and to draw you more into him. The work of the devil is to keep you in a place of selfishness and unbelief. Those are dead works. Trying to get you thinking about self, focusing on yourself, being like, well, if I just attain something, if I just become a better person, then I will receive the increase. That is a dead work. The increase is in you right now. You are worthy to receive God now. You have the blood of Jesus. You are righteous. And it is your absolute right to receive him and what he has for you. He died on the cross to give you this right to bring you into this place and to destroy the works of the devil and to destroy doubt and fear and unbelief. There's a scripture in Isaiah that says, who is blind as my servant and who is deaf as my messenger? And I tell you, you are. You have the mind of Christ. You are deaf to the darts and the thoughts of this world and the devil. And you are only hearing the word of God and receiving the absolute truth about who you are in Christ. Amen? Amen. I'm ready to pass. That was nice. Um, so I have a kind of a silly testimony, but 
It was powerful to me. Um, I'm sure a lot of people here and over there think that God doesn't speak through TV. Well, I had a testimony like that. I actually stopped watching TV. I haven't had a TV since I was 14. And now I'm almost double that, minus one. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and um, I was working this past week, and my boss, she said, hey, we want to go somewhere. Do you mind staying over your shift with two hours? So I was like, sure, that's fine. <laughs> so I stayed, and I was watching TV. So I was watching this show. Uh, it's called Celebrity Wife Swap. So it's basically... It's about dynamics of different families. They switch wives for one week. And anyway, they try to work that out. So it was this celebrity. He's not even that famous. But um, so it's about, you'll listen to my story. <laughs> so um, this family, uh, the new wife, basically somebody else's wife, swapped with this couple. and. She went inside of the family, and she noticed how the dynamics of the family, how everything works. And she couldn't help but notice that the husband of the new family, for one week, had clothes everywhere. He had hangers of clothes in every room, even in the bathroom. So everything was fine with that family, but she couldn't almost hold it in that she uh, wanted to change him. Anyway, they make a new rule after three days, and uh, the, fa the new family has to function after the new wife's rules, basically. So she's like, you got to get rid of your clothes. This is not working. You are a clothes hoarder. So the guy was like, no, this is actually my thing. Clothes are my thing. Don't mess with me. So she just tried, and she was constantly poking at him, like, you have a problem. You need help. You need help. You need to get rid of your clothes. This is insane. How do you live like that? And the guy was like, stop. You know, this is my thing. I'm a public person. Outfits are, you know, something important for me. So at the end of the show, obviously, they kind of do perspectives. Like, what do you think about your week? So they were sitting at the table, and the wife that kept poking at this guy for his clothes, she, they didn't even sit down. And she said to his wife, your husband has a problem. He has clothes everywhere, so he needs to get rid of his clothes. And uh, I don't understand how you guys live like that. So she just kept going on and on about it. And she thought that by saying that, she will actually expose this big problem that the family had. Anyway, this is what I'm trying to get with the story, is that the wife, she kind of looked at her and she's like, I, I know, and I'm okay with that. Clothes are his thing. None of the clothes that are in the house bother me at all. Actually, I encourage him. And then all of a sudden, this big issue that this lady created become nothing. Like she wasted the whole week talking about his habits. And that's when the Lord spoke to me. Well, I was actually asking the Lord, what does it mean to be in rest in a practical way? And right at that point, God told me, see how for this lady was such a big deal that this guy had so many clothes and she made such a big deal out of it. And for his wife, it was okay. She said, I'm okay with that. I, I really don't care, it's okay. And then God told me, you know, being in rest means when it looks a problem to everybody else. It looks a big problem to the devil, and he's constantly poking you, constantly bringing it to your mind. Hey, you have a problem. You need help. You're living in sin. You need help. You, this is how you live. This is a problem. And then you having the response that you are already in rest. You are already doing something about it and saying, that's fine. You could keep poking at me. 
I am okay with that. I know I'm already doing something about it. And it was such a beautiful picture of being in rest, being at peace, no matter what everybody says and how much they want to bring the issue to you, you are already at peace and you are already at rest. And um, it seemed like uh, now that I'm married, people keep bringing up to me the fact that my husband has a daughter and everybody's like, well, what do you think of that? What? So they um, kind of in a rude way and I kind of get worked up about it. I'm like, it's a problem. Why do you mind? So then God spoke to me, see, see how it looks like a problem to everybody else, but it's not to me. I actually made the situation this way. I, I brought you to him to uh, bring him to me. So then I was like, wow, <laughs> this is awesome. This is how you're showing me that I have to be at rest. This is how you are showing me that I have to be at at peace. It was such an awesome picture. I'm just so blessed. And God just spoke to me through these people that I have no idea who they are. <laughs> yeah, that's my story. Hey. So the passage I wanted to read is uh, out of Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm going to start about, I think it's about verse 8, somewhere in there. And please don't get hung up on the apostles, prophets, pastors, and teachers for sons. That's not what I'm getting at, so I'm just going to read that part for context. The one who descended himself, that's Jesus, is also the one who ascended above all the heavens in order that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some on the one hand as apostles, and on the other hand as prophets, and still again some as bringers of good news, and finally some as pastors who are also teachers. This is where I'm, what I'm getting at part of it. For the equipping of the saints for ministering work with a view to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the experiential full and precise knowledge of the Son of God, to a spiritually mature man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ. We're all actually growing to be the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And we're not doing it on our own. Um, we're, we've got each other. We're, this, we're all the same family here. And so, yeah, I'll get, so um, there's another part in here that's interesting, but it's not the main focus, but I'll read it just for sake of context. In order that we no longer may be immature ones, tossed to and fro and carried around in circles by everyone of teaching and the cunning adroitness of men, and craftiness, which furthers the scheming, deceitful art of error. This is the part that's for us. Also, awesome. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him and in all things, who is the head, Christ, from whom all the body constantly be joined closely together and constantly knit together through every joint of supply, according to the operative energy put forth to the capacity of each part, makes for increased growth of the body, increased growth, increased growth of the body, resulting in the building up of itself in the sphere of love. I've seen this some, we're connected. Um, so if one of us is grows and increased in something, the people that were, there's a connection to other people and then that increase is shared. And so, yeah, it says right here, it says constantly being joined closely together and constantly being knit together. And it also talks about the capacity of each part. We can be increased in our capacity to increase others. Um, yeah. So I want to share that, that um, like was said earlier, whatever we're going through, it's, uh, it's growing and developing us, but it's not just for us, it's for others, the rest of the body. And yeah, that's what I want to get at. Please be encouraged to uh, grow and increase and uh, be increased. Oh, he's amazing. John 5. That is verse 5. 
And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 30 and eight years. For how long we have our infirmities? Did you ever ask yourself for how long you are in emotional infirmities, physical infirmities, insecurity infirmities, fear infirmities? For how long? When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. Hmm. I'm thinking about my case. Are you thinking about your case? For how long? And Jesus knows your case. For how long? We still want to stay there, to be there in the case. He said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The question for me and you Do you want to be made whole? He didn't say, Do you want me to heal you? Do you want me to um, renew you? Because when he makes you whole, everything is there. Healing in your body, in your emotion, in your soul, in your mind, is deliverance, is freedom in him. Everything is in his wholeness. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. And I'm thinking, how many excuses we always have? I didn't find no one to pray for me. The phone was busy, nobody answered me. I don't know. I'm so tired of everything. I don't know anymore what I should believe, what, how I should believe. I need help. I don't know what I should do. It's like everything what I know is not working. I have no man, I have nobody. It's looking like God forget about me. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step is down before me. Jesus said unto him, rise. Take up thy bed and walk. Three things what I encourage you to start to do today. Rise. Rise up from your situation. It's not who you are. Rise up from depression, anxiety, unforgiveness, fear. Those are not part of you. Rise. You know to believe these things take courage because you are afraid. Oh, if I will do that, maybe if I will move, you know, my, I have a pain in my leg, you know, if I will move, maybe I, I really? I have to take it easy or not yet. You know, let, I will let, thank you, thank you for encouragement. Yeah, I, I'm still waiting. Rise up. It's life in you. It's already paid for. It is in you. It is in me. Take up thy bed. You can imagine. Somebody lay down, be sick, could not, you know, no way in the way what should be moving. He said, yeah, rise. Take up your bed and walk. Take up your bed 
that is courage. It is a risk. Are you sure you can carry your bed? Are you sure you can lift up that bed? How that can happen? Take up your bed and walk. Three things, rise because the authority is in you and you can rise up. You have the word and the word is the authority, is the final authority. I am coming out of this situation. And immediately, the man was made whole. The result of rise up, take up your bed, and walk in victory. And in that moment, you are made whole. Faith. is an action. A lot of time to take an action is a risk because we cannot see, we cannot. Our mind cannot comprehend what will happen if I will move. I can make more damage to my pain or what will happen because we look in a natural. But when the word come, rise, that is the authority. What will take over? Our problem said, come, I am raising you up. I am giving you life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am in you. Take up your bed and walk in Jesus' name. Let the life and the courage and the faith rise today in you and take up your bed and walk and be strong and courageous because who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. Um, I love a verse from the Bible, Jeremiah 5 1. If somebody wants to read it, I don't have an English Bible with me. Can you read it? Jeremiah 5 1. Um, it's a very important verse. Amen. <laughs> so for me, when I read that verse, it was like a big revelation. Oh, my Lord, for one man who loves God, you know, <laughs> he said for one man who seeks the truth and executes righteousness, I think, he pardons the whole city. I said, oh, my Lord, <laughs> how important it is to be a good Christian and, you know, be with the Lord and do what is right. Okay, may the Lord help us all. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. We don't know you, but we'll, we'll get to know you maybe later on. <laughs> yeah, remember that verse. I haven't, I haven't read it for a while, so it's good. Thank you for bringing that verse up. Um... Wow, that they were pre pre good words, guys. That's uh, that's powerful. Kind of went in different directions, but I see the what the Lord is bringing to us is um, definitely life. Um, so, 
I think I think some of some of these verses you probably know them. Um, Sam mentioned I think one of them, um, Genesis twenty two. So the word that we are looking at that platino in um, in Greek means multiplication by reproduction, reaping the fruit. And uh, Acts six seven is kind of interesting. The word of God spread and the number of disciples multiplied were obedient um, to the faith the word of God spread and disciples multiplied did you see that it's kind of kind of interesting um, and we'll we'll understand more about this okay I just want to really give you the the vision at least how I understand <clears throat> second Corinthians 9 10 and we'll talk more about um, this later now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness and I want to go principles of multiplication and one one thing that he showed me is that God produced the first seed in order to multiply it see different people try to understand why Jesus came right so they have I think all of them are good answers you know, all of them are good answers um, you know he came to save us he came to die on the cross he came to resurrect he came to um, you know redeem the whole creation he came you know to make a new start and lots of these are good I think the, the vision that this verse is giving us is that basically what the Father, the Father's vision of sending Jesus since he was the Word and the Word became flesh. The Father's vision was that when that seed was ready, he will multiply it. This was the vision of the Father. When, when the time came, people came to Jesus and he says, okay, it's time for the Son of Man to be glorified. What glorifies the Son of Man? Singing praises to him, worshiping him. Unless the seed, the grain of wheat dies, it will remain alone. But if he dies, it will bring much fruit. That is the glorification. That means the purpose that the Father had for the Son was to have this perfect seed ready to be sown so he can multiply. Multiply what? Start lots of churches? Spread Christianity in the whole world? No, multiply the same quality of seed. This is what glorifies the Father when the first seed is multiplied in us. So, this verse is very powerful in Hebrews 2.10. For it was fitting for him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings Jesus was born of the word but that seed was ready for multiplication after the sufferings a divine seed in us does not have to be multipliable immediately so now th this is important because Jesus was perfect in all the stages of his earthly life he was perfect as a kid he was perfect as a teenager he was perfect in all his ways right at the same time he says here that he was perfected so we're not talking about only the spiritual perfection because spiritually he was perfect he was not perfected he was perfect. He was one with God. Jesus was God. There's no more perfection than that. He's talking about the soul. 
because the soul had the man and God. The man and God in that soul. When he was tempted in the wilderness, that was part of this preparation of the seed. Because when he was ready and God said, yes, now the seed will be planted, was not only the word of God, but was a complete man that was going to be planted. You know, what happens in us, in our souls, is we are becoming like the soul of Jesus. Our soul is getting perfected into the soul of the Son. We are learning to deal with temptations, with problems, with sicknesses, as He did. So the sowing of that seed was not just a spiritual thing, was a whole man thing. Paul says that our bodies will be sown as deadly bodies and they will be raised as the body of Christ. So spirit, soul, body, the whole thing, that's what Jesus did for us. The whole man a new creation. A new creation man is not just a spirit that's one of the Father, born of the Word, born again. It's also a soul transformed, changed, grown into the image of Him. And eventually, it's a body that's going to be completely changed. I'm not going to have these bodies for the whole eternity, thank God. You're going to have brand new glorious bodies. But all of this, spirit, soul, body, all of this was in that seed that was planted. So this is important to know. Okay, God prepared who you are going to be, who you are becoming in the first seed. So if, you know, this is a word now. This is becoming interesting. It says somewhere, I think, in Psalms that the word of God is proven and um, went through fire and absolutely uh, true because it has been proven. Now, you're thinking... Why would the word of God be proven? The word of God is the word of God. It's absolutely true, right? But the word of God in your soul has to be proven. All the trials that your soul is going through are not because you are too sinful, too ugly, too bad, or too nice. It's because there is a seed of this word inside you. <coughs> The word is tried. The word, when it comes into you, a word of a promise, I will be with you, have no fear. The word of a promise comes inside you and is supposed to transform you into that restful place. That's the word of the promise. Tell you, take my, take my yoke upon you and you learn rest for your soul. So this is a word of promise. And then all the things start happening in your soul. The questions, the problems, the fears, attacks, all those things that come towards you. Trying, testing the word. The word, when it was proven, it will take over. So how is your soul going to look like? Like him. Your soul is going to look like Jesus. It's going to be so unshakable, so fearless, like Jesus himself would be here in your situation. Like he would be in your situation, in your family, at your job, and dealing with things. That's what the word is making you. The word of God comes and the trials come. 
to destroy the world, to suffocate the seed, to not let it bring fruit. Because the fruit is him. Why is this important on multiplication? Is because the seed of the word brings fruit in us first. I remember talking to some um, now pretty well-known preachers and it's like, hey, how, how do you prepare your preaching? It's like, oh man, I read from five, six books every time. I mean, it's like, you cannot just read from the Bible. You have to read from books and see people's opinions and things that make sense and you put together and you have your three points or five points and you go through them and you explain. And you're a good preacher, right? You're a good teacher, you got it. Huh? So it's like, so if you're going to teach about do not fear, if you're going to teach, teach about courage, what you're going to do? Well, you're going to read about what courage is, read some psychology, read some books that talk about courage and stuff, and make sure you have a very nice uh, illustration that really makes everybody cry or laugh, and you make your sermon. So everybody's going to like it. So I'm thinking, wow, no wonder the people leave after that sermon with lots of information, maybe some tears, maybe some laughter, but no growth. No change. No real change. So you end up to tell people, and I remember I really liked debates in the beginning, so if somebody would say something, Oh, I had three other verses that would show exactly different. And I would jump in and talk. And I was like, ah, so hold on, hold on. You didn't get the point. Let me tell you. You know, I was reading different books. I knew different things. I love that. You know, so I'd go to some meetings. Nobody knew me. So I'll just let them tell their stuff. And then it's like, now nah, what about this verse? It's not like you guys are saying. So it's like, everybody's like, who is this guy? I, I kind of got a kick out of that. I was like, enjoy that. You know, it's like, well, let me tell you. And I realized there's just nothing. <laughs> there's absolutely nothing. It was just kind of a brain, brain kind of a conflict, you know. We are all brainiacs, you know. So it's kind of like, oh, no, I'll tell you, oh, no, this is smarter. Oh, here's my idea. It's even smarter, you know. So it's just go back and forth and back and forth. Poor Bible. <laughs> Poor Bible. Everybody was shredding it. You know? It's like, no, no, no. Who memorizes more verses and all this stuff? That's like no fruit. No fruit. And then I learned from the Lord. If you open your mouth to talk about forgiveness, the simplest thing, salvation, unless that has fruit in your life, just shut your mouth. It's going to bring no fruit in anybody. I remember when he started from the beginning. What is the blood of Jesus? Absolutely foundational things that I was preaching them. I was hearing them. Everybody was confessing them. Had tons of songs about them. I had no fruit of them in my life. So the Lord said, let's start from the beginning. Why do you read the Bible? <laughs> well, it's good. I, it gives me material to preach on Sunday. And, you know, I like to talk to others and explain. And it's the word of God. It's like, no, no, hold, 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 just leave that alone. Why do you read the Bible? Why do you pray? <laughs> oh, it's good. Communication with God. And, you know, I was preaching to him. <laughs> that's the worst thing you can do to preach to God <laughs> he's got patience so he smiles back it's like nah. so taking all this human religious argumentation and all this stacked up religious attitudes and lingos that we learn taking everything and bring it to the basis and he says unless this word brings fruit in your life. Unless you see that victory over the sickness. Unless you see the victory over the fear. Unless you see the victory over the sin. 
what are you talking about? Oh, I'm reading from the Bible, Lord. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's not going to change them. Only the seeds, living seeds of the Lord changes them. There are lots of people reading the Bible with the Bible in their hands that are so far from the Lord. In Jesus' time, the scribes, the Pharisees, they were doing nothing else. Day and night, fastings, readings of the Torah. They were the farthest possible from the truth. And when the truth came, they killed them. <laughs> no, no, that's not what changes people. Only the living word of God changes people. You will know, you'll hear talking, different people saying different things about faith, about righteousness, unless that happened inside there. Unless there is a fruit in them, you'll see the difference. Some of them will say, wow, that's interesting. Didn't change me. But some of them is going to say, wow, this is a life. I got it. That's the living word. Each word of promise can be multiplied as it is experienced and proved inside us. The seed of the word brings fruit in us first. From that fruit we share with others. By sharing the word, it becomes seed planted in others to be multiplied. <clears throat> Isaiah 55 for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, make it bring forth and bud, that it might give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. These are the two actions that it does. Bread to be eaten and seed to sow so you can have more. Okay, it always has to do the future. So shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I send it. The word of God was sent to make the first seed, Jesus, the word and multiply it into us. You are to be a seed that can multiply. If the Lord is changing you, your soul, and he does, that part that he transformed is the part that can be sown into others. Otherwise, you're sowing bad stuff. <laughs> Only what he revealed inside you what he had victory, overcame inside your soul, only that part can be multiplied. And I'm, I'm not saying this to discourage you to sow. I encourage you to sow, but I encourage you to sow from what is growing inside you, what has fruit inside your life. What you know that you know that you know, it's for real. Not what you heard from someone, not what would be nice to be, what, if you, what you hope is going to happen, but something that's absolutely real fruit inside you. The third principle of multiplication, I called it division for, <coughs> for multiplication. Interesting, in biological life, and I think I'm... I'm not that 100% there in the soul or religious life. I saw it in the religious life that people call splits and divisions grow. Okay, so if a church or a group splits, they say we have two churches or two groups, and they think it's a growth. Okay, so that's not really how God envisions multiplication. Okay. The spiritual is one becoming many so they can again be, uh, again be one. The body of Christ is never separated or split, but the organization might be. 
So this is, this is what I want you to see. If this is the true body of Christ, it's not going to be a split. Okay? You will stay one. You will stay one. No matter that you go maybe to other denominations or other gatherings or how you see that, the oneness that the Lord does, the fact that we know we are brethren, we are part of the same body, that's not going to change. That's there, right? So the verse here in Corinthians where Paul says, now this I say that every one of you say, says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, and I am of Cephas, and I of Christ. <laughs> Interesting. Some people said that the ones that said that I am of Christ are the, were the wrongest. I don't know. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? So, Christ is not divided for multiplication. There is not what God intends to do multiplication. He intends that everything that he is inside you is going to be multiplied in your neighbor, in your friend. That's what he wants. Okay? It doesn't want the split so he can multiply. He wants everything that he gave you, everything that he did in you to be multiplied in somebody else. Okay? So this is, this is important. Okay, what do you give to somebody else? Now, what do you give? An idea? Um, some teaching? Another Bible? Good. But actually what multiplies the life is giving Christ. Giving everything that the word brought fruit inside you. That's what you can help them grow with. You understand? That's, that's exactly what he wants. That's the vision for your life. Everything that he brought fruit inside you, you can start giving others and planting in others. Okay? So this is, uh, we are not growing by division. We are multiplying by reprodu reproducing the same seed. Reproducing Christ. That's how we multiply. And huh, how do we get more seeds? How is God multiplying the seeds that uh, you are sowing? By teaching you how to sow and expect abundance. In the verse we read earlier, Now may he who supplies seed to the sower. He supplies seed to the sower. And bread for food. That's exactly like Isaiah 55 as you read. Supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. He is the one that wants to multiply the seed because you learn how to sow those seeds. So he's going to bring in your life, after you have this absolute victory over fear, and you know that you know that word really Cast all fears out of you. He's going to bring inside, you know, on, in a grocery line, in the church you go to, in your neighbors. Somebody's going to call you. It's going to bring someone that fights fear. You know why? Because he wants to multiply that seed. Do not miss that. It's like, well, what should I tell this person? I don't know, Lord. Well, what should I tell? He gave you victory over fear. What should you tell him? What he gave you, give. Just share with them. You know, you've been battling with uh, different uh, spirits and cast these demons out of, I don't know, maybe around you or other people in, close to you. Um, manifest that. Tell people, you do know that God gave you authority to cast all demons over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall harm you. Do you know that? Speak this into people. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to get more of it. You're going to get more of it. Second Peter 1, 2, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus, 
our Lord, grace and peace be multiplied to you. How do you think it happens? How do you think God multiplies grace and peace? <laughs> he gives you double measure of grace. He blows more grace over you. <laughs> That word that Paul was saying had the multiplication in it by the power of what he was saying. You know what Peter or why Peter or Paul could say that? Because they had abundance of grace in their life. <laughs> Just read about Paul. It's like, I did all this, but not me. The grace of God. When I'm weak, that's why I'm strong. There's so much grace. I love you, grace. And then, oh, let me write to these guys. Grace be multiplied. That word had the multiplication in it because they were full with the fruit of grace. Full with the experience of joy and mercy and power. So next thing they do, they start speaking that. That's how multiplication comes. Bless the people that come in your life and say, be increased, more grace to you. Don't say, wow, well, that sounds kind of weird. I don't know what you're talking about. No, embrace them. Say, yes, I received that. Because that word, if it came from the fruit of their lives, maybe they just came through a period of time of trials and, and the Lord gave them this amount of increase of grace. When they Speak that over you. Receive it. Oh, it's so, such a blessing. Because he will increase grace inside you. Amen? All right, let's, let's pray and we'll close here. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You are so unusual in the way you do things. Thank you, Lord, that you got us to be free of understanding our ways and trying to figure out how you're going to speak to us, how, what you're going to do in our lives. And we totally trust you that you will speak to us. You will not stop until you will change us. You are relentless, Father. Your love is relentless. You are after us. And you said that you will finish what you started. We love you, Father. We thank you that you multiply the seeds in us. And you teach us how to speak this. Therefore, Father, in your name, we speak multiplication of life strength, power into the body of Christ. Let the seeds planted in their souls grow. Be increased in all the areas. May them manifest the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. We trust you. Amen. We'll see you next time.